Hello everyone, I'm Song Kwa. Once again, thank you for agreeing to become one of the voting judges. And here is a simple briefing on what does a voting judge need to be alert of. And this particular deck of slides is prepared by myself based on the speech contest rulebook and other contest materials. And of course, it does not represent any districts, clubs, or Toastmasters International. All right, so first of all, to be a voting judge, please meet the following requirements. And as in a club contest, all of you must be a paid member. So when you go to an area division or district contest, there's an additional requirement that you must complete at least six speeches in CC manual or at least completed level one and two in pathways. And other than that, number four, Judges for contests beyond the club level are not eligible to complete in the same contest type during the same contest cycle. All right. So in short, if you are just a judge for a club level contest, you can still contest or you can still become a judge if you are a club contestant. But other than that, you should not uh, take up the judging role. Next one, uh, here is also the judge code ethics, code of ethics, which is also in the form. So you can read through this and I think I'll just like to highlight a few points over here. The idea of uh, being objective, which is really judge all the contestants based on the form, the balloting form, okay? The different criteria of the contest. And of course, do not consider the contestant's club area or even if he or she was a past senior district officers or held some high leadership position in the organization. So we do not consider all these kind of things. So, okay, so just judge the contestant's speech performance based on that day. And of course, there are other factors as well. Their race, their gender, their ethnics or whatever it is. So please be neutral and avoid any biasness. And another very important thing is the timing. Timing is taken care by the timers. So do not undermark or even uh, what you call that. Mark them down in short. If you see that, oh, the contestant is speaking for more than the required timing. The red light has been on for quite some time. And you think that, oh, definitely he or she will be over time. So you mark them down and think that, oh, they will not have the chance to win or be in your top three. So don't worry about timing. Just do your job as a judge. Okay. Now, in terms of the disqualification of contestants, here are the four main things. First is regarding the eligibility of the contestants. He or she need to become a it need to be a paid member. So for this part, right, you'll be taken care by the contest toastmasters and a contest chair. So you don't really need to worry about that. Okay. But if you suspect that, hey, this person is potentially a candidate for the upcoming term. Okay. You want to protest about this. Okay. You can have evidence to show that. Maybe you can uh, raise this up. Okay, other than that, the eligibility part usually is taken care by the contest chairs. The next part is the originality of the speeches. 25% or less of the speech may be devoted to quoting, paraphrasing, or even referencing to another person's content. So it must be able to be identified. When you listen to that speech, you think that, oh, it sounds very familiar. Maybe it's uh, you heard it somewhere or you confirm that too. Oh, perhaps it's a past world champion uh, winning speech. Uh, the person actually copied most of their speeches from there. If you can provide the evidence or the video, yes, we can protest about that. And of course, the timing that I mentioned just now, if the person speak more than the required timing, he or she will be disqualified. Don't need to talk about that. Then the referencing uh, actually is relay somehow uh, continuous. I would say, I wouldn't say it's continuous, but then here, right, the contestants must not reference to another contestant. Even mentioning their name is 
really, really risky. So potentially, we always tell the contestant, please do not mention the other contestant name, even though the name is not recommended. And of course, a speech presented by another contestant, any part of their speech during their speech at the same contest in which they are competing. So if you think he or she does that, we can also uh, raise a protest on this. Okay, regarding protests, uh, you as a voting judge, you can uh, lodge that. And very important to take note of the timing, which is prior to the contest being adjourned. If the contest toastmaster or contest chair has announced that, okay, the contest has been adjourned, all right, so we can't really do anything anymore. So please be mindful when the contestant is ongoing, you know, in the one minute of silence or whenever it is, you can just text me if you want to protest, okay? And of course, the contestant will be given an opportunity to respond to the voting of the judges and everyone will have a chance to vote whether to really disqualify the contestants based on any of those uh, reasons just now. Okay, this is just an excerpt of the rule book. Don't worry, the slides later on, I will also share a copy, the PDF version for you to just have a better look. Regarding the balloting, okay, in a physical contest setting, there will be a physical ballot that you need to write it and submit it to the ballot counters. So here in the ballots, what you need to do is to key in or to write down your first, second and third place choice of the contestant name according to the name that has been announced. And of course, um, how you utilize to have time to write on a ballot is during the one minute of silence. All right, the judging form. All right, you need to put your names and also do a signature. This is a sample of the ballot forms. Very important is that you need to make sure you are using the correct ballot, which means if you are doing an evaluation contest, make sure you use the correct uh, judging official ballot. And we only want the bottom part, okay? I do not want to know how you rank the participant or the contestants above, but I just need the bottom part where I can see the first three place of the contestant, okay? And of course, if there is a repetition of the contestant name, maybe it's an error or something, then the ballot will be void, okay? So make sure you have uh, written the contestant name correctly, all three different person, your signature is in the correct line. And of course, your full name is on the right bottom as well. Okay. If not, uh, if you only cast vote for the first two or you leave it blank, even though there are more than three contestants, you see the note on top, it says that the vote will, the ballot will be voided. Right. Okay. Now, Okay, in an online contest setting, I've also recently uh, do this. I will use Google Forms as a way to calculate the ballots, okay, to automize it a bit. The procedure is still the same. Submit your name, and then there's a drop-down button on the first place, second place, and third place, where you choose the contestant name directly. So you won't be afraid that, oh, I will key in the wrong name of the contestant. No worries. You just need to click Submit, and then uh, we will get that responses uh, online and calculate it accordingly. So this is really to save time because we don't really have much time uh, in an online contest, especially if there are so many contestants and they need to get the results done uh, fast, okay? Now, other important notes as a judge is that, especially for online, is you need to have a stable internet connection. If you know that sometimes your laptop is... Uh, you know, create some problems to you, make sure you have your mobile device as a backup as well. Always have a backup, okay? If not, it's very hard for you to judge the contestant. Next one, if you have any protest regarding the speech, okay, or eligibility, you can inform me personally with evidence, okay? Uh, not to say that, oh, I feel like, I feel like, but then you need to have an evidence in order for us to, you know, discuss and vote for the protest. Of course, remember, before the contest adjourn. Next one is, uh, I will also share with you the agenda. Please make sure that you log into the contest at least 10 minutes before, okay? Uh, since you have already been watching this video and the briefing, I will also provide you the slides as well 
for reference. So I don't think uh, we won't meet up for a uh, briefing again during the contest day. Okay. Next one is very important to use the judge's guide and ballot form to mark your ballots. Each criteria, I would love that if you can really put in the marks for each criteria and then total them up. I think this is the fairest uh, compared to you just use your filling to give them a total mark. Okay, this is very important. And the last one is remain anonymous at all times. Before the contest, during the contest and after the contest. And in this part, I would love you, uh, no matter, okay, especially online contest, no matter how the link is being shared with you, whether it requires registration or it's just a link for you to log in, please, please do not log in any Zoom account. Okay. I know that nowadays everyone you will have a, you have already signed up for a Zoom account. Okay. Not to say pay or not pay, yeah. it's just that you already signed into your Zoom account. Maybe sometimes you have your profile picture there as well. So even you off your camera, your profile picture will still be there. So how can you remain anonymous? All right. So it's very important for you to sign out of your Zoom account in whatever device that you are using and then join the meeting. I uh, key in the meeting ID, the password. Or, or you can just click in the link to join. And make sure no one knows that you are joining as a judge. Okay. But just in case if you accidentally join in first with your profile picture, I would suggest you quickly rename yourself as a guest. Imagine or let them thought that, oh, you are a guest visiting them. And then uh, find ways to go out and come in again with another secret identity. Whatever it is, it's very important to remain anonymous and of course, do not on your camera, okay? For the renaming part, uh, I will let you know which uh, judge you are, okay? The, the numbering of the judges so that, uh, why do I like you to num number yourself at least? It's because I would like to make sure that my judges are in the room all the time. J1 to J7, for example. So I know that, hey, every one of you are there. It's here for me to monitor if anything happens. Okay, so I'll just quickly uh, go through the rules uh, for each of the contests. As this is a humorous speech and evaluation contest, I hope that you are familiar with the rule book already. General rules, yes, it's quite general and the subject must be selected by contestants. Okay. And of course, it must be a complete speech with opening body and closing and not a monologue or series of one-liners. Some people thought humorous speech must be something like a stand-up comedian kind of speech where they try to make people laugh, okay? But I think humorous speech is not really about laughing or making people uh, happy, entertained. But the key here is that other than making people laugh, is what is the message value that the speech can deliver to the audience. How the speech is crafted and delivered in a very tasteful manner that engage the audience. So what is the value of the, mess of the, of the speech? Okay, so if they just make people laugh without any point and you don't really understand what the speaker is saying, you may want to mark him or her down, okay? Later on, we will just quickly go through the judging criteria. All right, so this is a timing which you do not need to worry. I just let you know that generally humor speech is a five to seven minute speech. For evaluation contest, at the beginning, there will be a five to seven minute test speech which will be settled by the contest chair. He or she will find the contest speaker. And of course, we need you to be there as well to evaluate the test speaker, okay? So that we can better, uh, you as a judge can better judge the contestants, whether, you know, the points given by the contestants, are they relevant? Is it justifiable? And the recommendations provided, does it really help the, the test speaker to become better in the next speech? And for evaluation contests, the timing is two to three minutes and don't worry about the timing once again, just for your information. 
Now I would like to show you about this balloting. So I will send you this Google form link for you to choose your top three. And of course, on top, I have also pasted the judging criteria. I'll just briefly go through it. Content is a 15%, uh, 55%, including the speech development. Okay, you can read this. I think it's quite clear and easy to understand. Effectiveness, especially, you know, the audience is receptive. Uh, in this case, right, because it's an online contest, especially, how do you want to judge A, the audience response? You've seen them before? Very hard, right? So maybe you can just ask yourself as an audience, how do you feel? Did you really laugh out loud when you listen to the speech? If yes, you are feeling entertained, perhaps you want to have a higher marks for that contestant. All right. Speech value, like I say, it's also very important. Did you learn something from that speech? Delivery part, 30%. The physical presentation, okay. The voice, the vocal variety, and the mannerism. Is it enthusiastic enough? Or are they confident in their actions? Sometimes when people are trying too hard to make people laugh, they may not look very natural. Or you can see that hey, they have some sense of nervousness while cracking that joke. So how does it look like and how you feel? You can just uh, mark them accordingly. Lastly is the language. All right, here in terms of the language, you can see that it's the least mark, which means that even though they may have some little grammar mistake along the way, it's not too bad because uh, it doesn't comprise majority of the marks. The most important is really about the speech. Does it able to touch your heart? Did you learn something? And whether the speech, the story, is it developed in a chronological or very engaging way to put you through? You really understand the speakers. Okay, so this humorous speech contest judging ballot. And here you can see, you can put in your name, all right? And I will just give you a preview. All right, it looks like that. And you can just put in the names. All right, just pick it. Of course, remember to pick three different names and confirm, tick this checkbox and then submit. That's it. All right, so very easy to do the balloting. Evaluation contest, uh, just to quickly go through the four main criteria. The first is the analytical quality. How effective is the evaluation? Okay, so means there need to be the strength of the speaker presentation and also the weaknesses. What are the recommendations? Are the contestants able to point out the, the strength and the weakness of the speakers accordingly on, the, on point? Okay, the next part is the recommendation. If you notice, Recommendations means how the speech could be improved, okay? Here, the recommendations needs to be practical, helpful, and positive, and the speaker would not feel hurt or discouraged after listening to these recommendations. It needs to be uplifting kind, okay? The next one is on technique. Some evaluator love to use acronym, abbreviations, or whatever pattern it is. Up to you up to you to want to mark them up or uh, mark up them okay mark up their marks or whatever it is but you need to just uh, evaluate or judge whether the technique is effective or not it makes sense or not okay lastly is the summation in which the contest Many evaluators actually miss this because they spend too much time in the first few components. They forget to sum up or they do not have time to do that. So this one actually summation doesn't mean that, oh, I like your speech, looking forward to your next speech. No, it, here it says, briefly summarize the evaluator's comments and suggestion, positive and encouraging, which means you will briefly touch on the good points that you have shared and also the recommendations. 
wrap it up beautifully. And here, right, in evaluation, I also like to just highlight something. If an evaluator is very fluent and uh, what you call that, very attractive in presenting their points, okay, very enthusiastic, it doesn't mean that the recommendations or even the technique used is good. Can you get what I mean? It's really not about the delivery style of the evaluator, but it's more on the points, the comments that they share. So don't be, uh, what do you call that? Don't be influenced or affected too much by the evaluator's vocal variety or presentation style, you know, suddenly bring up a flower or props or etc. But focus on what they say, whether their recommendation is helpful or not. Okay, so stay focused and uh, abide to this evaluation judging criteria so that we can really nurture better evaluators to help members to improve their speeches. So that's it for the balloting part. Okay. And thank you. So that's the end. If you have any other questions or in any parts of in this presentation that I have made a mistake or even you have uh, any better ideas or suggestions, feel free to connect with me or drop me a comment. Thank you very much.